Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and thank you for joining me on my channel. Now today I've got another ink and oxide colour combination video for you under the Distress range and it's using Uncharted Mariner. So we're focusing on this colour and we're going to see how it compares to other colours in the range and we're going to look at two colour combinations using it also. Hopefully lots of tips and tricks for your ink blending as we go. So Uncharted Mariner is a beautiful dark blue with a hint of green and it's absolutely no secret this is my favourite all-time favourite Distress Oxide colour or ink colour either way. So we're going to first of all take a look at how it looks with um, all the others in the range. So is there anything similar? Is What would you mix it with? Things like that. So what I need to do is first of all blend it onto white cardstock. Now everything that I'm using is available linked down below. So if you look in the description on this video you'll find everything there. So I get a lot of questions about the blending mats I use because I don't use large ones all the time. This is a 6x6 one that's available in a set with an A4 one. Um, the blending brushes I use, um, just to say I have linked the blending brushes that are up at Craft Stash, but I just to get the variation in color handles, the colour handles, um, I do also go to Amazon for some as well. So I kind of do both and they are equally as good as each other, although I do find the Craft Stash ones have the larger head, which makes blending a little bit easier. So there's Uncharted Mariner just onto a little bit of white cardstock. Now you can see how beautiful that is. It's a gorgeous, rich, dark blue with that hint of green. So it's a tiny hint of green, but I think it's just enough to make it really yummy. Now when we're looking at the label on a, an ink pad, you want to look at the bottom left-hand corner or the top, top right-hand corner. That's where the colour is solid on the label. Everything else in the middle is what it would look like if you mix it with water, which of course is one of the properties uh, they are water reactive with distress oxide so that's why we get this kind of different shades on the label but the bottom corner is where it's solid so as you can see although mine is a little bit lighter and I could probably layer up a bit more colour on there it's not too far off the label makes it look a little bit darker I think but not too much and then the ink pad is pretty similar as well so you've got that touch of green in there so let's just clean this up and let's have a look at what else in the distress range will sit with this or near this and you know is there anything that we could replace it with if you don't have this color now this color chart that i'm using here is available for you to download for free it's not filled in so it's blank um, i obviously fill it in every time i get a new ink pad i do have them all now otherwise i wouldn't be doing this series uh, but it's a really great way for you to start seeing what you've actually got in your stash and what you still need where you've got big gaps within which color groups and so on and so forth and it's great to take along to things like shows if you go along to craft shows purchasing inks so you can see uncharted manor right down the bottom here with that hint of green if we go above to the next one chipped sapphire a gorgeous dark navy blue but you can really see there where you've got the touch of green in uncharted mariner um, and then prize ribbon is again a royal blue a dark royal blue fairly similar they're not too dissimilar and certainly if you don't have uncharted marin at the moment but you'd like to try these color combinations you could definitely replace it with one of these but i do think the green in this uh, sets it apart from the other two as we work our way up i think faded jeans is, uh, could be replaced as a slightly lighter tone um, but it doesn't have that green undertone to it and then as we go through, I think with Peacock Feathers there, you can really see that green. And also if we come along to um, Pine Needles there, again, you can see how that would lead really beautifully into that again because of that green. But there's nothing else similar. Uh, I think it's just these two, Prize Ribbon and Chipped Sapphire, that you potentially could replace it with. But for me, it's a standalone colour. Nothing, nothing can possibly replace it because it's so beautiful. Okay, so let's pop this aside. Like I say, this is available for you to download for free on my website. I don't ask for any email address. I don't ask for any money for it at all. Um, go and print that off and fill it in at your leisure. There's also a template included on the download when you print it off. Now, something else I have got on my website, which I haven't referred to for a little while, is this colour chart as well. This one is available for you to print off too. 
again for free and this one is filled in so it's a lovely at a glance um, just seeing all the Distress Ink and Oxide colours. I've actually ink blended onto white cardstock and then scanned it in 300 dpi so hopefully it's as as close as possible to a real swatch for you. I like to have this on my wall but I've also got one, this one here is laminated so it's also a blending mat too that I can wipe clean. And then lastly I also have some labels for you. These are also available for you to go onto my website and download and then label your ink pads and of course your brushes as well if you wish or wh whatever it may be your storage so uh, go and check those out take advantage of those because like I say they are completely free okay so next we're going to look at a tonal combination and that means going from light to dark within one color so for this one I'm going to just blend into this strip here that I've already started so we've put the Uncharted Mariner on the end I'm going to go into Peacock Feathers so I'm going to take advantage of that green base and work into Peacock Feathers in the centre here now when I'm blend ink blending I go across the strips horizontally but you don't have to do that of course when you're working on your projects this could be horizontally across a large panel for an ombre background for example or it could be diagonally, could be vertically, or you could do something like radial. So you're going from the lightest shade in the center of a piece and work your way out to the darkest around the outside. I'm just giving you the colors so that you've got an idea of what works together, what will blend together nicely. The way you put them on your projects is entirely up to you and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. So just then taking just a dab of extra ink onto my brush, you will start in the solid piece, so that's where the colour was solid here, not the blend line. So we've got sections. So this is solid colour. This is the blending area. And then this is solid colour. So when I apply my ink, new ink, I'll always go down into the solid colour first and then kind of push that out into the blended area. The same this way. So let's pick up some peacock feathers, go into the solid area first and then work my way up, push that colour up in small circles into the blended area. Very light pressure. I'm not pressing down at all when I go over the blended area and I'm always, always working in those little circles. I think that's perfect. That doesn't need any more work at all. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Now, when I'm doing any of the color combinations, you can uh, always use just two that you like that go together. You don't, of course, have to use all three or four, depending on what I'm using that day. You can just use a couple. Um, and as you can see, these two do work together absolutely beautifully. So let's just wipe this clean and I tend to use um, a kitchen towel because it absorbs as much of the excess moisture as possible and that way I don't get um, any water reacting. Now I have got a smudge of Uncharted Mariner which has come from my hands here I think on the end here. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. It might be that that, is, that shows through the next colour. It may not. We will just have to see how it goes but this isn't a project it's only a swatch now I will show you in the last video um, of this series how I've stored all the swatches that I've created because it might be interesting for you to see if you've done anything similar um, I have laminated them onto a sh onto sheets and stored them that way so I'll be showing you that at the very end so the last one is going to be worn lipstick we are about eight videos away from that, but I am really hoping to get everything done in 2023 so we can start 2024 with the next series, which I've already started sort of planning for, testing out, and it's going to be really good fun. That again is based around Distress Oxides. So building up the solid colour, now Salvage Patina is a paler colour, so I would find it takes a little more work. I'm just working around in those small circles up to the blend line there. There we go. Then I'm going to come back to my peacock feathers. Let's just move this down a little. And I'm going to again start, although I'm not adding any more ink, I'm only using what's on my brush, but I'm going to start on the solid part and then just do those gentle circles up. You don't want to have a sudden hit of colour on your blend line because it will be a nightmare to try to blend that out. And that's why we work very gently in small circles. We're almost sort of creeping up on the colour. There we go. Now if you find there's any areas, so I can see here I've got a bit of a dip of colour. 
uh, that's not blending out. So a touch more on my, just a touch more on my brush. I'm going to start on the solid colour and just blend a little into that blend line there. Gorgeous. Okay, let's lift that up and have a look. So there we go, there's our tonal blend. Now, with Distress Oxides, I always feel they look, the blends look 100 times better once they're all dry, once everything's dry. Because at the minute, there's a little bit of patchiness, there always is, and this is because the dye part is still drying. Once the dye's dry, you're left with the pigment on top, uh, and it gets that lovely oxide cloudiness look. And I just think it looks 10 times better. We almost got over the ink there, almost covered it over because the pigments do have this gorgeous opacity where you can layer them. Um, but it's so, so pale, like I can barely see it. I would probably flick a little bit of water on there to have a little bit of a distress reaction and I wouldn't see that. I would still use that on my project. So there's our first colour combination. Let's pop that to the side and let's take a look at the other one. Now this one, I'm actually bringing in another pop of colour and I'm going to bring in pinks and purples. Now, this is a colour combination that I have used for a long time and I absolutely adore the Uncharted Mariner going into Seedless Preserve. So I couldn't possibly do this particular video without using those two together. There's actually an awful lot of colours that I love Uncharted Mariner going into, uh, but I only have so many hours in the day, <laughs> so do you. So let's pop Uncharted Mariner on the end first. Being a deep dark colour, you tend to find with deep dark colours that they would go on the end of a particular colour blend. Um, just because they're sort of the dark, the dark at one end, usually going towards the light at another end. Okay, now because I'm switching to a completely different colour, just take the excess off there, again with kitchen towel, don't need any water with that one at the moment. I don't use water until I've really got quite a bit of ink blend uh, built up on there. If it wipes off with just a dry cloth, then perfect. Seedless preserves. I want to say maybe my second favourite, possibly. Um, I mean, just look, it's like a grape colour. It is beautiful. We've already got the video up for Seedless Preserves. Now, it's entirely up to you whether you feel it's a pink or a purple. There are mixed rev reviews, mixed opinions on this one. I think it's more towards the pinks, but it sits within the purples in the Distress and, uh, Ink and Oxide range. So, you know, it's it's so far between, it's very hard to say. Okay, so popping that down again, working on the solid colour first, up to the blend line, and now I'm going to work on blending because I'm going to come back with my um, Uncharted Mariner. I'm going to pop that down on the solid and start blending that up gently. And we get this beautiful dark purple colour between the two when we blend these two together. There we go. Yeah, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Really, really like that. I like the purple in the middle as well because it's giving us that transition. Now I was tempted to do this combination with a purple in between the two, but then I remembered that actually it creates it itself, so I didn't need to. So I'm just going to go over with a little bit of solid seedless preserves there just to really make sure that pink is coming through. Because I'm going into, again, another completely different colour, I'm just going to wipe my mat. If I'm working with the tonal colours, I don't tend to wipe my mat quite as often. I kind of leave it because it's fine if it picks up other colours. So let's put the lid on that one. I usually leave the, leave the lid off the previous colour because I very often will come back to it. So let's just pop this over here so I can hold that. Again, I've got a smudge of dark. I'm not being very clean today, obviously, but that's okay. We can probably kind of get over that. So this is picked raspberry, the brightest pink of all. 
we're getting to the stage where nearly every colour I use has its own video um, published already on the channel and if the playlist is completed of course everything is there for you to go back and look at so if there's a particular colour you see you think oh I really quite like that go back and have a look at that colour on its own um, look at the properties of it in the way we have here and also have a look at some colour blends using it or some other colour blends using it and make a note of those colours as well those blends I know some people have been creating swatches like myself some people have just been jotting down in a journal um, which colours work with which you know so make use of the videos while I'm doing kind of the testing and experimenting for you some of the colour combinations we do just don't work well they they're okay but they're not as great as we think because as I say to you all I don't test these out before I film the video I have a look and I think okay that looks like that would work but I don't test them out I just go for it with you and we'll see what they look like so you can see we've got some dampness there that needs to dry but as I say with distress inks and or particularly distress oxides can you see how this has gone more cloudy it's more frosty it's a cleaner finish now and this will do exactly the same I think it always looks better the blending always looks better if you pop it aside leave it for five minutes and then look at it again just you just always get this smoother finish once it's dry so don't panic if you find so I've got a little bit of mottling there that's just where it's soaking into the cardstock and picking up at different at different rates I suppose the dye part of the ink so there's two colour combinations for you. Please do remember to check out the playlist here. That's got all of the videos for you. And I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel just here. Now I'm going to be back again very soon with Victorian Velvet. That's the next video on the list. And hopefully we can get through all of these by the end of 2023. Thank you everybody. Take care. I'll see you soon.